Um, this is our second to last um, talk for the uh, for the day, um, and this is Greg Greg Evans who will be will be doing this talk. And um, if you would like to um, have um, sort of add any money to our coffee, we're about seventy five percent of the way to our goal for today of um, obviously paying for Zoom and, and our web hosting and everything else we do. So if you if you don't mind, if you are able to to um, donate to us, that we we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. And um, without any further ado, I'll hand over to Greg. Um, Greg, you, I believe you obviously. Well, like all of us, you're a new player at one point in time. You've taken it upon yourself, which I think is fantastic to sort of uh, let new folks um, give, give them an idea of how to, how to play a mega game. So, yeah, over to you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, uh, first, good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whatever part of the world you, you're joining us in from. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for, for attending today. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a uh, training communications pro uh, professional at a major uh, retailer here in the United States. Um, in terms of hobby, uh, I, I really enjoy being a, a dungeon master. Uh, I enjoy board games. Um, I joined uh, Mega Games in 2019 um, and have contributed an alarmingly high amount of views to the, the ever so famous video. And as you can see on the screen, I, I've played in a, a, quite a few me uh, Mega Games now. Um, mostly with the uh, Dallas Mega Games Group here in uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, and usually whenever I play, I, I'm the vet on the team. Um, I'm the one who goes out. I recruit all the other players on my team. I, uh, am, I really love introducing the game rules to my groups. I enjoy uh, kind of helping new players come along on this, this crazy journey that we have. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I decided to start the, the, the casual area of my blog that I, that I run. Uh, because I really saw that there was a little bit of a hole in our in our kind of our community as a whole. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there for people to read about game design, but there's nothing for people who are outside the hobby that might be interested in coming in and playing and kind of getting expectations of what they might be seeing whenever they get into this awesome hobby that we're all a part of. Uh, so here are some things that uh, players might want to know before game day, uh, like going all the way back to the day that tickets go online. Uh, so how do we entice new players? What are, what are new players looking for whenever they're, they first come past a listing or first get a, a text message or a discord ping from one of their friends? Um, what, what things might they be looking for? They might be looking for, uh, kind of like, what's the setting? What is, what is the game going to be? Where's it based? Where, what mind space do they need to be in? Um, and additionally, after like kind of setting out outlining that what the game is, uh, is there any way for you to be able to showcase the exciting things that make mega games mega games in your listing? Obviously, it has to be kind of short, uh, but what what can we do to show them in our uh, kind of ticket briefings what what the game is going to be about, uh, and maybe even what kind of roles they might be uh, excited to play whenever they actually get to the game. Um, another thing they might be looking for is, you know, what is the day going to be like? How long are they going to be there? Um, are they going to, is this a, a four hour commitment? Is this a five, like six to eight hour commitment? Uh, something that a lot of people don't know whenever they first buy a ticket, uh, but something they definitely uh, need that expectation for. Um, how many people are going to be at the game with them? Um, especially, you know, coming from everyone being by themselves a couple years ago to being in a, a giant crowd of, 40, 50, 200 uh, people, uh, it, it takes a different headspace for a lot of people to wrap their head around. Um, additionally, what kind of uh, environment are, are we going to be playing in? Uh, is this going to be a, a bunch of kind of small rooms where it's small intimate group sessions, councils type games, or is it going to be a, a loud space that they're going to have to kind of get used to? And then what is the, the expectation for social interaction? Um, one, obviously, one of the things these games are built on is that social interaction. And I, I feel like it's important to be upfront with new players uh, to let them kind of know that expectation before they even buy a ticket is that, you know, you're going to be expected to interact with other people. And that interaction leads to some really great memories and stories that you can tell later on. And uh, going up next, what type of game is being played? Uh, is this a rules heavy, mechanics heavy game? Because that's going to appeal to kind of a war gamer who, who likes to know all the little intricacies, all the little tiny things that they can do that makes their game a little bit better than somebody else's. 
or is this role play heavy where a lot of it's in that uh, that creation space in your head and uh, the, the stories that you're telling come from a completely different place than a game that might be rules heavy. And it's important for uh, us to kind of lay that down for any uh, new players who might be interested in playing these games with us. And is it a game that kind of incorporates both? And how do you show that to a new player? Um, is, is that explaining that some roles are going to be very focused on negotiation and deal making, while others are going into the, the nitty gritty of moving uh, little pieces across the board and stuff like that? And then uh, this kind of playing into another one, but this is more of a what, what happens after they buy their ticket, uh, whenever they're kind of thinking towards that game day, towards that big event that, that's coming up, uh, what do they need to bring with them? Um, <clears throat> do they need a notebook? Uh, is there going to be food or drink available? Or is that something that they need to do on their own? Uh, is there going to be a lunch break? So should they like, should they uh, brown bag special it that day? So they're, they're ready to go. Or will there be about an hour that they can go out and bring something back in? Uh, costumes, costumes are really, you know, it's a, it can be a divisive issue. Uh, so some people uh, might be put off if it's even um, an expectation that some people are going to be dressed up. It could be weird or they could be really all for it. So are they going to get rewarded for something like that? And that might be something cool for a new player to know. And then uh, one of the, the number one rules uh, being in, in Discord whenever uh, we're talking about games here in the Dallas channel, uh, at least once a week, like as soon as tickets go up on sale, people are asking, hey, when are rules going to be sent out? When are rules going to be sent out? Uh, and I think it's important for game runners to set an expectation of when players can expect those rules to come into their inboxes. Um, and obviously, it's going to be a, a variable scale as to when you want to get those rules out. If it's a mechanics-heavy game, players are going to want a little bit more time to be able to digest them and understand them uh, before they actually get to the, the, the venue. Um, if they're going to be sent out closer to the game, um, set, set that expectation so that they're you know they don't bug you every every week for for two months hoping that rules get sent out. Um, and, and if there's a specific reason why, I know uh, in, our, in our, our group here in Dallas, uh, one of the big reasons that rules aren't sent out until closer is so that people aren't, you know, brainstorming and scheming with all their buddies for two months in advance of the game. Uh, kind of, uh, and is there a way that you can showcase that you want there to be that little bit of mystery, that little bit, bit of confusion of uh, those rules as they get closer to the game day? And one of the real reasons why everybody asks is a, a new player, especially, they don't know what to expect from our games. They don't know what kind of experiences and what kind of headspace they need to, in. And sometimes having that rules PDF is the only way that they can concretely know that this is what they personally are going to be doing that day. And then roles. Um, in Dallas, I, uh, we do it a little differently than they do it a lot of, uh, in a lot of other places. Uh, you buy your ticket and you buy it for the team that you're on. Uh, usually it's you might be with friends, so uh, you can kind of pick your roles on your team uh, based off of the tickets you buy. Or it might be like it is in a lot of other places where there's just a big batch of tickets and you get a survey a few weeks before the game. And uh, new players need to know that. They need to kind of know how they're going to figure out what they're going to be doing that day. And then how do you help them find the role that works for them? Um, there are definitely people who lean more towards the different roles in these games. And there, there, there needs to be a way uh, to help them identify that, whether it's a short briefing about uh, each specific role, or even if there's some kind of way that you can showcase a single, uh, what a single turn might be for, for some of the roles that are going to be in the game. And then uh, just something to think about, um, if you, there's a new player in your game who, who maybe doesn't really know anybody else there, and halfway through the game they find out, man, I really don't like the role that I'm in. Is there a way in the game that you're playing that you can help them either find a way to enjoy the role or move into a new, is there a role that they can move in that might, might help them out a little bit more? Obviously, depending on the scope and scale of the game, that can be really hard. 
but just something to think about uh, to make sure that new players are able to come back because they have that positive experience. Um, this is coming uh, in, into a lot of focus uh, recently in our group. Uh, how important is your background information? Uh, should you be reading like the, the debrief of the lore of the game? Um, because some people just skip past that and never open up that PDF. Some people will read it and view it as gospel. And that's the thing that they have to, you know, they're, they're, they have to follow. Um, and I, I think it's important to set the expectation, you know, as the game gets closer of how important your background and, and briefings and such will be. And the why, why is it important? Um, that they need to know, you know, why is Proxima the faction that is always kind of the nail in, or the thorn in everyone's side in Den of Wolves? Is that on purpose? Uh, yes, I, I believe it is. But, you know, it's important for people to know that stuff like that will play out in the game. And um, if it's important, let them know that. And then at the venue itself, um, th this might be easy to, to forget about because um, we're thinking about all the game rules, all the game stuff. Uh, but does your venue allow food? Does it allow drinks? Uh, is there a place for our, our is there a place for smokers? Uh, can you have an adult beverage on the grounds? Do you need to bring cash? Do you need to bring credit card if they actually if they sell food or drink? Uh, just little simple things that can help set uh, kind of get people uh, ready in a way that's not game related but still very important to the game itself. Okay, and then arriving at the venue, uh, it's game day. They're excited. They have their notebook, their pens, all of those things. They're ready to go. Um, and the thing that they're looking for around the room is their point, their, their, their big POIs, their points of interest. And it's the person who kind of is checking everybody in who can be that first uh, point of contact that will make, uh, kind of give a, a good impression of the group, of the game in general, and make it a lot easier for new players to feel at ease whenever they get there. Uh, that person checking everybody in can point out to where the, the game, the team tables are, uh, kind of point out that, you know, you're going to have a flag that represents your nation. Go find that flag um, and kind of point out where that is in your room or rooms. Um, the, if there's a main map, where is it? Uh, what? How can they get to it? Where can they see it during the day? Uh, is there a, role, a, a specific role area or room that they need to know about? How do they get there? What's the easiest way to find it? Uh, is there a way to that kind of denotes what's a, a science room versus the council room or something like that? Uh, potty breaks are super important, and it can be really unnerving if you start a game and you're like, man, I don't even know where the restroom is because it's down the hall past three other convention rooms. Uh, and, you know, just point, pointing that out can uh, reduce a lot of stress and chaos later on in the day. Uh, where is control? Um, well, well, my next point points about, you know, what is control? But if somebody has a question, where can they find you? Is there a place that there's at least going to be one control person generally close to during the day? Um, and then how do they even find control? Uh, do you, do you, does everybody wear the same shirt? Does everybody, is there a, a specific, uh, vest or something that everybody wears? Uh, that first point of contact person in the room, uh, can easily kind of set somebody's mind at ease by outlining a few really basic things, uh, that eases everybody's, everybody's mind. Okay, and this is one that uh, I know has been a little bit of a discussion here in the uh, in the community recently, but leaning on your veteran cast. Um, I know that uh, groups that have been playing for a long time, they probably have frequent flyers that have been at almost every game or been at every single game. And I think it's important, especially for new players, that not only is control a welcoming presence for, for the team, or for, for new players, but there's also a group of veteran players who are going to be out on the floor interacting with these new players who can also be uh, friendly faces that they, they can look for. And uh, how do you contact or how do you get in touch with the, with your, your veteran players to kind of talk about expectations and if they're even interested in doing something like this? And what things can they do to help during, during the pregame? Um, can you encourage them to mingle and, and talk with new players? 
Um, I know a lot of people, if they've played before, they want to get in, they want to get with their team and start talking about what they're doing that day. Uh, but can you have a, either a small group of, of, of uh, frequent flyers who go out and they, they, they look for the new players who are obviously very confused, flipping through the rule book like crazy, um, and, you know, have them help through some questions that they're having if possible. And, and really what this does um, is it shows that your group's welcoming. And it, it's a simple step of going up to somebody, but it can mean so much whenever somebody's overwhelmed with information and, and new faces, new people, to see somebody come up and just, you know, want to chat with them before a game starts. And on the other hand, it also subtly shows that there's going to be a lot of talking during the day. If, you, if, if they see people who, you know, obviously know a lot of people in the room are going around and talking to, to other groups, they see that oh, we are going to have to talk to people. We are going to have to interact with a lot of people throughout the day. And also, uh, you know, uh, our, our veteran players are some of the ones who come up with some of the more outlandish ideas. And uh, they also know the mechanics of the game usually a little bit better than people who have you know, never played or very rarely play. And it shows that th these new players who the people are that they might be able to be like, hey, I'm having a problem. What's something I can do that's not a control player, that's actually a, a player themselves. Um, I, I believe it was the uh, the Mega Game Assembly started an, an awesome program recently, uh, the Mega Game Mentors, where they have a, a bright orange sticker or a bright orange pin that, uh, that uh, players can wear. So the new players know, hey, I can go talk to that person. Um, and first you need to identify if that's, you know, even a program that you want to follow or something you want to use. And if so, think about what, or, uh, sorry, that's not my, my next way here. Uh, you, you need to think about how programs like this, how having veteran players go and talk to people, uh, how you make sure that there's a distinction between game talk and helper talk. Uh, because it's really easy to, you know, conveniently forget that there's a really important rule if a new player comes up and they're absolutely confused, but forgetting to tell them something helps you out in a way. And if you have veterans who are out there helping helping new players, uh, you have to stress the importance of giving correct information when asked a new player question. Uh, because obviously, if if I were to give somebody incorrect information that hurt their team but helped my team, that would create a really negative experience for that new player, and they would not want to come back because the the person that was being so nice and helpful. Uh, actually told them something wrong and it hurt their game. And as such, you should probably in some way say, this is a phrase or something that signifies that I'm asking a question as a new player rather than just as a fellow player or as a or an, an in-game talk uh, kind of thing. And then specifically, uh, is there something in your game that you would like your frequent flyers to go out and discuss. Uh, for an example, uh, in December, we played Watch the Skies here in uh, Dallas. And I took it on myself to go and talk to any, basically I talked to all the teams to see if they had any new players. And stressing the, the little things in the game that make, that kind of help make the game what it is at the start of the game. Uh, talking about aliens are bad. Uh, did they read the briefing that shows if that happens, something negative is probably going to happen? Um, you can share those interesting stories of uh, the last time that you played or uh, previous interesting things that happened. Uh, I, I remember this la in uh, December, I was talking to a new player and I told them about our, the scientists in the first game that I played, uh, creating a, like a spaceship on their own and going out to space. And they're all like, wait, you can do that? That's cool. Um, and uh, it just shows them a little bit of that, that possibility space. And then uh, if you don't want them to do something on the day of the game, uh, your veteran cast, I think, it can be the, those people who help drum up excitement, whether it's in Discord, your Facebook group, however you organize your players, they can be the ones that bring up those fun little things to talk about the game and actively keep interest in the game high as we lead into the game itself. <clears throat> and then pregame speeches, uh, command your, commanding your room uh, before the game starts, setting the tone. 
uh, unfortunately, people will ignore you. Um, <clears throat> I, I remember in December, I, I think maybe half the room listened as our control team was was starting their brief uh, and the pregame speech. Sorry. <clears throat> but don't take it personally. They don't mean to do it. Uh, they're strategizing. They're getting everything in, involved. New players are probably overwhelmed and they're doing last minute cram of their rules. Uh, but I think it's important for you to take a moment and enforce a pencils down. Everybody put down your stuff. Listen, I'm about to tell you something really important. Um, <clears throat> and this is another place where you can ask your, your frequent flyers, your veterans to be like, hey, everybody, let's be quiet. Let's listen. Something important is happening. And then uh, what is important for new players? What are important for veterans? What expectations do you have for the game? Um, remind them things like talking to control if you want to do something not in the rules. Talk to control or veteran players if you want them to uh, for game questions. If you have that helper program, talk about it now. Talk about the big things that or the, the, the words or phrases you want them to use to show that they're asking help or questions. Uh, remind them of the importance or unimportance of your briefings or your team backgrounds. And uh, I, I believe, and mileage may vary, but something I personally believe is that you should emphasize that mega games are above anything else, a collective storytelling experience. Um, and that winning is really, really cool, but coming together with, 30, 40, 200 other people to tell an, an absolutely unforgettable story is infinitely better than taking first place. And then something that I believe is a really nice to have, depending on the game that you're playing, um, is being able to break out in your specific roles, where applicable based off the game, of course, to kind of go over a rules uh, kind of explanation with people who you're going to be interacting with throughout the day. Um, obviously, there are games where you kind of want them to be learning on the job, uh, but if possible, taking a moment uh, to where uh, players can ask a ask questions about their role uh, can be really helpful for new players who might be nervous, who might have questions that they don't feel comfortable asking, especially if they hear a veteran player ask a, a question just after that role's explanation begins. If, they, if a, a somebody who has been around, who has been kind of circulating the room has a question, it might make it a lot easier for uh, that new player to ask a question as well. And then uh, never make assumptions of anything. Um, people probably didn't read their rules. Uh, I know that they're, they were probably asking for it for like three weeks before the game started, but then, you know, things got really busy and they forgot about it. Um, so, um, Make sure that there are a few things that you obviously touch on before the game starts. What is the game premise? What, you know, why are we here? What is kind of the, the theme of your game? Uh, is there any kind of intro that you can do to set the tone of the game? Do you want uh, the leaders of the kingdom to talk about to all of their, their servants about the, the glory and, and whatnot to kind of set the tone for your day? And then uh, lastly, just remind them of, the venue and, and things that, that make sure that the people that whose space you're using want you to come back. And uh, one of the things that uh, I, I think has been, uh, that I've heard a lot recently is uh, the space outside the rules. Uh, and I've heard a number of players in the game and say, I didn't even know you could do that. And I think there are a few things that we can do uh, both as control and as veteran players uh, to help kind of let them know these things. Uh, and as I like to call this, this is the rules beyond the rules. And uh, so in, in my last game, um, I, I had a, a, a new player on my team who after the first turn, he sat down and goes, is there any way that I can make a Tesseract in this game? And we were playing Watch the Skies. And I go, dude, that sounds great. I don't really understand what it is because I, I I just don't. But if you think you can do it, go talk to Control and let's do it. And so he went off and near the end of the game, he was able to do it. And it crafted this whole different thing. Uh, we, you know, we stole China's nukes and then a group of rebels stole the nukes from us and nuked the U.S. fleet. So it caused a lot of crazy chaos, but it was absolutely unforgettable. And seeing him go from, man, I am so confused. I don't know what to do to 
I just like completed this amazing goal that everyone wants a piece of was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I think created some really awesome memories for him. And um, it, it's really important to, to kind of set an expectation for how crazy your players can be in game. Um, uh, one thing you can do, uh, this might be either during a pregame, this might be during a uh, kind of before the game ever starts, it might be during a, a speech or something. Uh, you can give examples of some past things that the teams have done. Um, but obviously you want to stress that if, if we tell you something, we're probably going to either make it really hard for you to do, or we can tell you that we've already incorporated a previous idea into the game itself uh, to kind of show off some of that cr uh, creativity that has happened in the past. And then where's their, where's the, the ground floor of what they need to be doing? Um, obviously a creative idea in a low fantasy setting, like a Westeros or something is completely different than a, a creative idea in a game like Den of Wolves, two completely different technology settings. So something that works in one obviously won't work in the other. So you kind of need to show them where the floor of ideas is, um, what will work in your setting and what explicitly won't work. Um, I, I think that's very, and a very important thing to kind of lay a ground floor of. Um, showing them how you can, or where do they even start with these ideas? Um, is there a point contact on control that is the the, the plot person or the, the creative idea person that they need to kind of see, seek out and talk to? Um, should they have anything already in their head, already going uh, before they even talk to control? Or do they, you just want them to come up to you with a single sentence of what they want to do and then work with you? Um, is it a good idea for them to be discreet whenever they approach control? Do they want to ask control to kind of remove themselves from the uh, uh, the room or is it okay to just talk in the open? And then uh, something I, I know I've written about it a little bit on the, uh, the blog that I write, uh, but telling uh, players that they need to be open to their ideas being tweaked or changed to fit the game better um, I think is a very important reminder because people can get really set on having, man, I have this great idea. This is how I want to do it. But then if control is like, hey, that's great, but it won't work. Here are some tweaks that we can do to make it work. Uh, leveling that expectation early means that they won't be disappointed whenever they hear the changes that are, are, are made. And then uh, how difficult of an idea is this uh, going, going to be? Um, you and this, you can kind of approach this in a few little different ways. Uh, you can uh, say, hey, what you want to do is like doing this minor project that takes two resources six times. And it's like, hey, that's more turns than we're actually playing in the game. So what do you need to do to accomplish that goal? And obviously that's getting other people involved. And the more difficult a task will be, probably the more people that are going to be involved and showing them that that's going to be risky. Obviously, either you're not going to make the goal, the, that really hard goal, or someone could steal your idea, or somebody could intentionally sabotage it if they think what you're doing could hurt them. Uh, so showcasing that, that difficulty that they're going to see, I think, is really important. And, uh, you know, obviously, working together with other people is the hallmark of mega games, in my opinion. And the more difficult the problem, the more people you're going to involve and the better story you're going to tell at the end of the day because of that. And then, you know, who should they involve? Do you want to remind them that there are teams that might not trust you? Uh, or there are teams that might want what you want. There might be some really altruistic person on that other team that's going to steal your idea at the last second uh, because they weren't really all that altruistic <laughs> throughout most of the game. And it's just important to remember because whenever they're thinking about it and they have this great idea, it's like, hey, my buddy is on that other team. We're going to work together. Oh, your buddy is actually not going to work with you because their objective is completely different than yours. So they're going to sabotage it. Uh, but it's going to make a really cool story in the end. And then what is the reward? Why should they do this? Why should they find a rule beyond the rules? Um, and I think it comes down to it's a core memory, man. <laughs> like it's it's really those things that 
you know, a year later, you're going to be sitting, sitting somewhere with your buddies talking about that cool thing that happened at a mega game. And it's because you did something that was outside the rules. And, you know, <clears throat> the reward for the, the best ideas that we've had is it not only makes it a really cool experience for your team, a really cool memory for you, but it also positively impacts the game as a whole. And I, I think that if you can stress things like that and the importance of the, the overall story that you're telling, um, I think that the reward is more than just a game reward. It's also a memory reward. Okay, and then, and then finally, some last things uh, as I kind of wrap up my time here, some things to remind our new players. Uh, if you don't engage, you won't have a good time. Um, I think I think that's a, a core thing to remember. I've seen people sitting alone at, uh, during most of a game at their table. And then afterwards, they're like, you know, I just didn't. This wasn't what I expected. You didn't work with anybody else to, to do any of your goals. Um, and you have to talk to people. And I think reminding them th that being active is very important. And uh, you have to work with other players. Um, make decisions. Um, I, I think that new players especially should be empowered to make decisions. Um, and whenever possible, they shouldn't have to wait on their veteran player on their team to make the decision. And, you know, there are situations where, you know, they might need their team consensus to make some make it an idea. but they have to make it, they, they need to make decisions. Uh, and sometimes they're going to make the wrong decision. And that's super cool because uh, rolling with the consequence, the consequences is part of the experience that we're having. And the, the failures that you have can lead to better stories later. And now uh, the power of yes. Um, new players should say yes to things as often as possible. And uh, it's really easy to think about, but it's really hard in practice to do. Uh, and some of the best memories that you can make in a mega game are because you said yes to getting involved in somebody else's convoluted scheme. Um, you know, going back to uh, the Tesseract idea I told you all about a little bit ago, um, we had to get two to three other teams uh, on board to get it done and <clears throat> actively working with them, gathering materials um, and leading to these crazy culminations of things that we involved a lot of people in it created an awesome memory and uh, additionally you never want a, a a new player to be sitting on the car the bus uh the train the, the plane if they came from crazy far away thinking man what if i had said yes to that crazy idea i could have been the one who who snuck into the the enemy castle and stole the whatever uh obviously every game has countless what ifs uh, but I think you can encourage your players to, uh, you know, reduce that number of what ifs by saying yes to a crazy idea and making their personal game that much better. Uh, so I can open it up to anybody's questions and I will do my best to provide some kind of knowledge, I guess. Thank you, Greg. That was really cool. Um, you might have seen me look like, if you're in the zone, you saw me nodding along quite a bit. I definitely agree <laughs> with what you've been saying. Very cool. Um, before we start the questions, um, I think we just have to say, um, Lee, I think from Dallas Mega Games, he, he mentioned that you actually gave the Rebels those nukes, not, not got them stolen from you. So uh, <laughs> just to point that out for everybody. Um, but yeah, if anybody does have any, any questions for Ed, Greg, please post them either in the chat or in the um, Q&A, and I'll ask them now. Um, one first up from, from Ed. Um, do you have any thoughts about how to balance between overwhelming new players' information versus sort of giving them clarity on what to expect from the game? Because obviously you mentioned about sort of the uh, the background handbook there earlier on, but uh, yeah, any, any thoughts on that? I think that it comes down to a trickle of information. Um, hopefully, you if you have people who are you know actively recruiting for your games, which I wholly believe that you should actively have your veteran players recruiting for the games. Um, I think at the start you kind of have that overview of what the what the game is, some, some interesting points that uh, people can uh, kind of grasp onto and get find excitement in. And then as the game gets closer, you trickle out information, you trickle out little things that uh, to help them kind of get grasp a better understanding of what the game is. Um, so that the, at whenever they're buying a ticket, they're just not just like a six pages worth of information that they need to read. It's just a little bit, a little bit at first, and then it trickles out as the game gets closer. Yeah, very cool. Absolutely. 
Um, talking about veteran players, um, Kevin says he hadn't um, considered that, they're, that they are a fantastic idea, but he hadn't considered doing it. Um, so he's sort of been trusting people to sort of go and be welcoming. Um, but obviously you said formalise that. So it's a really good idea. Have you kind of um, got any thoughts on how to communicate that with, with the veteran players, maybe through Discord or, or you sort of... Uh, um, yeah, I think uh, so... In the in the Dallas group, we uh, they actually have a Patreon, and there's a kind of a group of the veteran players who are always there, uh, always at every game, that are kind of in that that uh, uh, VIP lounge as as they call it in Discord, um, and I think that that's a great place to communicate where you need help, uh, where when what thing actions they can take uh, before a game, uh, and then I think at uh, like whether it's during check in or during some kind of pre-game circulation, I think that you can say, hey, um, if you go up to somebody who's wearing this badge or uh, has this mark on them somewhere, uh, if you say, hey, I have a new player question, or can I ask you something outside of game? You know, that that moment of I'm not asking you something as my character, I'm asking you as the player. Uh, I think that's a, a good dividing line for those those questions to make sure that they get answered in a way that they are beneficial and not where later on they feel like something was taken from them. Yeah, completely. And, and Kevin's followed up on, on the question of, of veteran players. Obviously, some people do love teaching and mentoring and advertising on behalf of the group, but obviously others find it more of a chore, say. Um, yeah. Can you think of any, can you, have you got any ideas for any, or are there any initiatives that, um, that, that say, Dallas Made Games offer the veteran players to, to be able to go out and do this, any sort of like maybe lunch or something like that? I'm not really sure, but yeah. Um, I, I I think a lot of it is leaning on the people who already enjoy it. Um, I think before a game starts, there people, a lot of the people who play these games, I think in general, enjoy talking to people about the games. And it, it might not be that you have players who specifically want to talk about, hey, to do this action, you need to do X, Y, Z. You might just have a group of people like, hey, can you circulate the room and just talk to people who look like they're lonely or look like they're confused or something? Uh, just to create a welcoming atmosphere, I think is uh, way more important than rules ever will be uh, because you can get taught rules, but you can't get taught friendship. I guess is the, the way I want to say it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, yeah, obviously on sort of normal size game, it is, it is, it's 40 or people say, but it is, it is possible to go around, like you say, go around the room and actually see who is engaging and who maybe yeah. sit on their own and yeah, and try and engage them and get them more into the game because you're right. Yeah. It's very much a social game, isn't it? A mega game. So to be able to get somebody in and, and talking to others, is, it's, it's how to have a good time at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Becky says um, there's a lot of information people need to know ahead of time. And you mentioned obviously sending the people are badgering to send the rule books out sort of three weeks before and then just ignoring them. Yeah, uh, not, no people <laughs> really do that. Uh, but uh, have, you, have you got any thoughts on how to communicate all this sort of information that people have to absorb um, rather than just them tuning it out? Say, yeah, I, I, at first, I think you need to, sh to tell them, you know, not rank importance because if you rank importance, then people will be like, that's not important at all. I don't need to even worry about it. Uh, but tell them, obviously, when you send out the rules, kind of tell them the, what they need to know before the game in the rules that they read and can digest. And then the day of taking that little bit of extra time, if you have it, obviously, these are very long events and you only are in your venue potentially for a set amount of time. But if you can fit in that little bit of time where each little group of the big group is able to uh, gather with the people that are doing the same thing they're doing um, and ask those questions in a kind of a formalized way or get it explained kind of in a one-on-one -on -one situation where they can actually see the, the pieces I think is important because uh, one of the, the, you know, we're not, we don't play board games. Uh, we don't have like a set, uh, every single uh, game of Watch the Skies has this exact uh, map or this exact setup in the science room. It's all a little different. Uh, so we can't kind of create a uh, an SOP where we send out like, this is what you're gonna be looking for on the day of, uh, but you can gather all of the scientists in one area and be like, this is what we're doing. This is where we're playing. Um, so if they didn't read the rules, still stinks. We still don't like that that happened, but at least they have that, that set moment where they're not actively playing the game, where they can review the rules and learn them and kind of digest them while seeing the pieces laid out in front of them. Yeah, and ask any questions, I guess, at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And that's another yeah. place where you can plant your veteran players and be like, I don't think anybody's going to ask questions. Can you ask one or two here to help 
you know, break the ice. Yeah, completely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and a question here from me. Um, you, what, what, so I guess it's a two part question, really. But what, what question, what kind of roles do you enjoy playing at games? And, and if it's a leadership role, which seems to be, in my experience, a lot of veteran players do enjoy playing leadership roles. Do you find that you end up mentoring new players on your team or you try to find, we try to be on t- teams of new players, if that's the case? Uh, I'm 100%. Uh, I love the leader role. Um, my, my favorite roles that I've played are, you know, Admiral and Den of Wolves, uh, the president or, you know, uh, head of state and watch the skies. Uh, those are the rules that I love. And uh, I'm also I'm I'm all in on this hobby. So I, I read everybody's rules. Uh, any of the new players that I uh, kind of work or I recruit, I actually actively encourage them not to read other rules because uh, that's just kind of going to be information overload if they're already a little nervous about the game. Uh, but I, I really love kind of talking through the rules with my team and then seeking out the people in the same role that I am uh, and talking to them if possible, uh, kind of mingling it. Because like you said, a lot of the newer players don't go for that uh, kind of leader team leadership role. Uh, and since I have dove in and try to understand the rules as best I can, I, 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 I'm the last game that I played, Um, I circulated and talked to every single table uh, and kind of answered questions from every single role uh, just because it's fun. And I like or I love sharing this hobby with people. And that was a way to make sure that at least some of the questions that they might have wanted to ask were were addressed before the game ever started. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We need more people like you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think we kind of hit the, the 45 minutes, which is which is really cool. Um, that was an absolutely fantastic presentation. Thank you, Greg. Um, I think Thank we've you. kind of run out of questions now. But obviously, if folks want to find you, um, you've got a website, and um, I think you blog about this kind of stuff. Yes. Um, and I've posted a link in the chat. I'll also post a link on our Discord as well to that site. Thank uh, you. But yeah, anything else you want to close out with? Or are we um, it's come to an actual end, as it were? Uh, no, I think, we're, I think we're at an end. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your time today. Uh, this was super fun. And... Uh, can't wait to see if uh, anybody's able to put any of this into practice. Uh, please let me know. Yeah, I, I have to say um, I'm part of the very large huge games team that sort of run. We ran 200 player main game last year um, about Alien Arrival. And we've definitely done some of the stuff you talked about today. So, yeah, I think it's, it's fantastic. So thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks so much, everyone. See you later.